All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in Universal Mastery. Today, we have a very powerful and interesting video that it is that we are going to be discussing. And this is something that is literally so valuable and so important to understand within yourself because you can use this in all of these different areas of your personal life as knowledge that most people don't understand, most people don't have integrated, and most people just don't have. So utilizing this understanding in which it is that I'm going to be speaking about in our today's video is going to be so valuable, okay? And a lot of this stuff that I'm going to be speaking on is not like talked about at all. This is a lot of stuff that is coming from like an authentic space within myself from my own personal experience dealing with these aspects and portions of my own unconscious mind and the personal shadow. So that's exactly what it is that we're going to be talking about today is what is the core essence of your being in relationship to the deepest aspects of your shadow self, the unconscious mind, and what is from like an esoteric lens in a very occult spiritual lens, what exactly is the shadow within and how can you work with this shadow from a space that is actually valuable and healthy to get the most results in regards to your daily life experience. So this is once again exactly what it is that I'm going to be going into very much depth with in our today's video. So if this is something that you are interested in, then I would highly recommend that you stay tuned for the rest of the video. And I will see you on the other side. Okay, so here we go. So before we get started, I'd like to give a little bit of an introduction on who I am, just so that you know who you're getting this information from, because I think that that is something that's important. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck. I'm studied with planetary energies in association with astrology. And I'm also very aware of trauma and trauma's relationship to the nervous system. Okay. So with that being said, we're going into our subject. So a lot of people want to fully understand what exactly the shadow is within self. So if you've ever studied Carl Jung's work, you would have heard a lot about the shadow and about different archetypes of the psyche. And this is something that is very real and very important to really be able to grasp and understand for yourself. But even though people are studying the shadow, there's still a lot of people that don't have a practical yet very spiritual grounded perspective on what the shadow actually is. And because of that, people are oftentimes working with their shadow in a way that is not really serving their evolutionary growth process. They're not really working with it in an integrated way. And this is exactly what I'm going to be explaining how to do by understanding the proper awareness and education of what the shadow actually is. And this stuff is not only coming from things that I've personally studied over the years, but also is something that I am personally experiencing within my own life as I'm working with these deep portions of the unconscious mind. Okay. So we're going to touch on these very important things in this today's video. So let's go into it. So, what exactly is the shadow? 
So the shadow is absolutely in a deep re uh, relationship with the unconscious. So this goes for the personal unconscious, but it also goes for the collective unconscious. And this collective unconscious can even go as far as outside of our planet collective unconsciousness. So if you think about what you're currently unaware of, that is what you are unconscious of. That is what your personal shadow is. When you think about the collective unconsciousness, this is the conglomeration of the entire species, as well as outside of just our human species existing within our solar system and even within our galaxy of things that other beings are also not aware of as well. And that is generally going to be a space that we can refer to as the collective unconscious. Now, in more so esoteric terms or occult terms, we can look at this as the abyss, or we can call this the void. So every single one of us has an internal unconscious, has an internal shadow, has an internal abyss, and has an internal void. And all of these things are interconnected together. And once again, it's largely related to what we refer to as the shadow. So the deepest proponents of the shadow are going to be along the lines of, once again, what happens when we are working with this depth of our unconscious being? And what are some of the energetic proponents? Can we, uh, what are some of the energetic proponents that we can expect when we're working with this aspect of ourself, as well as the aspect of the collective? Okay. So within this deep inner shadow, within the deep inner void space, this is largely a space where death energy is very significant. This is the essence of what you hear in many spiritual traditions. A lot of people have learned this very deeply from a man named Eckhart Tolle, the pure essence of being through surrender or through completely letting go. So when we're working with the deepest aspects of unconscious self and the shadow, we are working with a predominant energy of sacrifice, surrender, and letting go. And this is an archetype of death energy. And from death, as we know, there is always a rebirth. And I'll go into that later. But we're working with this death energy when we're working with the shadow. Now, the core reason of why we're working with this energy is because it is in this realm of shadow work where we are now dissolving. We are now surrendering. We are now letting go. And we are going through disillusion. We could even go as far as saying we are going through a phase of deconstruction. So breaking down to then understand the core of what being is. When we do shadow work, we are always working with this inner void that always requires us to let go, to surrender, so that then we can experience the pure essence and core of our infinite light, which is the soul. So the soul is always permanent and it is infinitely existing. So congratulations if you're a human being who has made it to this video and you are listening to what it is that I'm talking about now, you have a soul that is infinite. And this soul is your own inner source that is always connected to the macrocosm of source intelligence. Your soul is permanent. It can never be destroyed. 
It can never be taken from you. It can never be given away. It is infinite in nature and it is an infinite light. Now, there are things that you can do that maybe aren't in the path of your soul's highest potential, almost like the timeline of your higher self, but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily moving backwards in your evolutionary growth or it doesn't mean you're completely stagnant. It just might be mean you're going down a certain path where you're going to learn some harsher lessons to then course correct. But regardless, your soul is an infinite light. So the soul we could almost look at is something that has emerged from darkness. So in other words, when we look at the nature of the universe, we have a universe that is predominantly made of dark matter energy. Now within this dark matter energy, which is the dark mother, right? We call this the primal dark mother feminine womb of nature. Then there emerges or there is birthed planets. There is birthed stars and constellations, star systems. And then there's intelligence that's on, you know, living within these things or on, on these things. So with that being said, it's the planet, it's the stars that is more so of that light component, that yang light component. Whereas these things are cradled by the dark matter energy of the whole universe, which is the yin component, the primal dark feminine. And both of them exist together in a very healthy way. Kind of similar when we look at like planetary energies, sort of similar to the contrast between the sun and the moon. Okay, sun being sense of self, expression, soul purpose, moon being self-reflection, emotions, and feeling and sensing and surrendering, okay? So with that being said, the soul is always generated by the source light. And source is such a profound, infinite light that it exists through all things. And it's the, uh, it's the combination of, you know, once again, all things. So light and dark and uh, being and non-being. So even within darkness, what we call this negative polarity or the shadow, the unconscious dark matter energy, we can call that darkness, but it's actually just a different type of light that we don't necessarily see the same way as we do the things that are more so conscious to us and things that are more easy to be grasped or sort of controlled. But both of these polarities are their own light in their own right. So with that being said, the soul emerges from that primal womb of the universe, we could say, that darker space, and it becomes this infinite light. And with that being said, once the soul is created, it is infinite. It's its own unique pattern and essence that is now infinitely existing and infinitely expanding, learning, and growing. So the soul at this point is completely permanent. So once again, when you have a soul, which all of you do, every single person human does, it's infinite. So when we're going through the deepest portions of the unconscious and the deepest portions of letting go and surrendering, and going through a deep death cycle, what is happening is we are letting go of and we are sacrificing all of these different aspects of our being that are primarily connected to different types of attachments, different types of protective, mechaniz protective mechanisms and managerial mechanisms, as well as control mechanisms that come through different thoughts and ideologies, as well as belief systems that form our sense of self-identity. And this sense of self-identity operates as something that we utilize to have the human experience in the way that we need to on this planet. 
So there's, it's very important to have a sense of self identity and to understand that that's important. So, you know, having an ego isn't a bad thing. It's what it means to be human, but being attached to the sense of self identity without understanding the deeper core of being is where you run into a lot of problems and a lot of unnecessary pain and stress because you don't know the core of what you are. So when we're talking about the soul, the soul is a light that exists infinitely and permanently, even in the darkest spaces of the unconscious. So when you're sacrificing and letting go all of these things like unhealthy coping mechanisms, relationships, titles, belief systems, you know, jobs, et cetera, you are now surrendering more to that pure essence that you are underneath all of that ego and sense of self. And there resides your purest essence of being, which is just you. You don't have to hold it. You don't have to maintain it. You don't have to keep it up or keep it alive. It is just you. So there's a deep sense of being able to kind of just drop down and relaxing into the purest essence of your being. Now, in order for people to really have this experience, it takes, oftentimes it takes a lot of self-development to get to this point where you're able to let go enough to fully surrender into the pure essence of what you are. Because even in that pure essence, in that state, you're not necessarily going to have a sense of self. You're not going to have an ego. You're not going to have these attachments the way that most people do to identify who and what they are in relationship to the world around them or society around them. And when you allow yourself to go to this space through doing very deep shadow work, surrendering to the shadow, finding the reality that the shadow is a part of you and it's something that you never are going to get rid of because it's a part of you. Rather, you want to build a healthy relationship with the shadow inside of your being so that you can better work with it and live a life that is much more worth living. But as I was saying, you know, as you're going through that deep shadow work and working with the unconscious, surrendering, working with that death cycle, working with that death energy, that is where you're going to go through ego deconstruction and ego dissolution. All of the different aspects of ego are going to be dissolved in regards to the things that are not authentic to the light of your soul. So all the things that are not truly authentic to who and what you actually are and what you're here to do and how you're supposed to be experiencing life on an inner level, these are the things that are going to dissolve, that are going to deconstruct. And then all of the things that are actually meant to be there, that are a part of your soul's expression, and a part of, we could say, your purpose, those things will remain regardless. So when you're going through this surrender phase, and you're working with this aspect of your shadow to such a deep degree, you end up experiencing the pure essence and the pure light of your soul without needing an ego or without needing a sense of self. And this doesn't necessarily mean that this state is the most comfortable state to always live in because it's so different than what most people are in. So there can be a deep sense of like introversion when you're working with this aspect of self, a deep sense of taking a step back from reality almost and kind of just being with yourself and working through this kind of in more of a solitude. Oftentimes there can be a lot less people that you actually resonate with when you're working with this aspect of self because most people are not going through this depth of surrender, but there absolutely are people that are and you will find those types of people during this phase that will show up as guides for you and will show up as we you could almost say companions to better understand what you're experiencing but it's in that surrender and letting go of ego or or a sense of self identity 
where now you are dissolving all of these different traumas and these, we could say these blocks that are existing within your energy field and your nervous system that are rooted in past traumas. So it's in this pure state of surrender where when triggers are coming through, you're allowing them to move right through your body. You're allowing yourself to feel it on an emotional, sensational level completely. And you're allowing yourself to be with whatever memories from the past that show up and as well as whatever thoughts that are showing up. And you're not trying to change these things. You're not trying to control these things. And you're not trying to avoid these things because you're in a pure state of surrender. So you don't even have an identity to be able to control these things. You can only face them. So this is like one of the most significant forms of cleaning out your nervous system and healing at a deep rooted level. And of course, at first, this can be really uncomfortable because you're probably not used to existing in everyday life or at least showing up in everyday life without an identity. So imagine how different relationships and environments and different search, uh, situations and circumstances start to change around you because you're going through this inner process of dissolving and deconstructing. So you can imagine as you're going through this internally, these things are also significantly manifesting externally as well. And this is another reason why a lot of people have a hard time going into this depth of the shadow and going this deep into the process of letting go and being willing to go through significant ego death and deconstruction of that sense of self-identity. But as I'm saying, hold on one second. just had to let my cat in. So as I'm saying though, it is in this depth of surrender and working with the unconscious that you are literally given the opportunity to find comfort and to find safety within no being. You are able to see the true light that exists without you having to hold anything, without you having to be that light, because you just are that light. You just exist as you are, and you have that opportunity to accept and love yourself for exactly what you are. Once again, without having to prove yourself, without needing any form of approval, without having to do a certain thing or be a certain thing, you are good enough and you are absolutely an aspect of source consciousness and this unique light just by being exactly what you are when you drop and when you subtract everything. Because remember what I said, the light of your soul exists within the darkest spaces of your unconscious and it can't be destroyed and it can't go away. It is permanent. One second, I'm gonna let my cat back out. Okay, so with that being said, once again, there's the deepest healing that gets to occur when we go through this process, which means now, in that full surrender of working with this death energy, working with this depth of the shadow, we are now healing these repressed wounds, these repressed parts of ourselves, and repressed emotions that are from our traumas in the past. And this trauma integration and healing can happen intergenerationally. So you can go back up to seven generations of healing trauma by working uh, with this depth of the shadow. Now, this is really valuable to know. Now, let me add this to this, to this whole thing. A lot of people approach shadow work from a lens of, I want to work with my shadow so that I can get rid of my shadow. How do I do my trauma work and my shadow work so that I can lessen my shadow and, you know, hopefully integrate and merge my shadow completely with myself so that I don't have one anymore? so that I'm only conscious light. And I can understand why people want that 
you know, people want to approach it in that way, but that's not a reality. And to approach it in that way is already approaching it with an unhealthy foundation because it's not authentic to what you actually are. So just like the yin yang symbol, you can't have the yin without the yang. So the yin is the feminine principle of the deep unconscious and the shadow. Just like with the universe, it's the dark matter energy. Whereas the yang is then going to be this aspect of the conscious awareness and the sense of self identity that then offers itself as a template for your soul's purpose to operate through in regards to the collective consciousness. For example, on this planet, it becomes a template of how you interact with other humans and with the world around you. So when we find acceptance for our whole being, we are accepting the yin aspect of ourself, which we could correlate to the sense of self, the identity, and the ego. And we're in acceptance of the unconscious, which is the aspects of ourself that is more shadow related and doesn't need an identity or an ego to just be this pure light of what the soul is at its deepest core. And in occultism, this would be the difference in regards to the, you know, the Kabbalistic tree, this would be the difference between the Sephiroth, which is the tree of life and universe A, in regards to sense of self and identity, and then the Klipoth, which is the tree of death, and subtracting to then get to the pure essence of primal being underneath sense of self. All right? Both of them operate together. There's not one over the other. They operate together in a healthy balance. And we want to understand these things so that we can better work with it. So when we're working with the shadow, we don't want to work with it so that we can get rid of it. We want to accept this as a part of us that we can actually allow ourselves to surrender to and to go deeper inside of to allow ourselves to, in a healthy way, deconstruct and dissolve aspects of self that are not actually authentic to who we truly are. So a lot of us have these built egos and identity attachments that are formed from unhealed wounds and traumas from the past. And this often shows up in the form of a lot of different unhealthy coping mechanisms as well as protective mechanisms and manager controlling mechanisms that we have that sort of create an energetic shell around ourselves that keeps us from being more of a healthy expression of vulnerability and a healthy expression of feeling emotions and being who you truly are with a healed inner child. So the shell that we create often keeps us from being socially engaged with other people. It keeps us from being curious, uh, from being adventurous. It keeps us oftentimes from seeing the life from a lens of joy and happiness and you know excitement and seeing things from a perspective of generally like a positive perspective, okay? So most people have an ego, once again, that is formed that is in resistance to the shadow, that is in resistance to this aspect of the unconscious. Therefore, most people are in resistance to deeply letting go and being willing to dissolve these different protective mechanisms and barriers. Now, there are many reasons why most people operate in this way largely because there's a collective lack of education on what it is that I'm speaking about now. And then to add to that, there is a lot of different programming and indoctrination that supports people to not embrace these aspects of the unconscious. So in most religious systems, this aspect of working with the shadow and the unconscious is actually demonized by the demonic realm or by the devil or by Satan. 
when in reality, there is no separation here between evil and good. This is simply positive and negative resonances that refer to different aspects of self, like shadow and conscious identity. Okay. And when we understand the balance for both of these polarities within self, now we can start healing and growing at a much healthier level and to a, to a much more significant degree than as if we were to separate these aspects of self, overly attached to one over the other, and then suppress our shadow more and suppress things we need to look at that are in the unconscious that then end up coming to the surface anyways, and then projecting into our everyday lives and becoming a problem. Okay. So with that awareness, once again, most people are in resistance to this aspect of their shadow. So if you as a listener are listening now, and you understand that the shadow is never going to leave you, the shadow will always be with you. Now what you can start doing is you can start developing your own individual relationship with your personal shadow, your personal unconscious, okay? Your personal relationship with what it means to let go of identity and completely be willing to feel emotions while letting them move through you and then letting them go as well as sensations and thoughts and memories from the past knowing that this is very healthy, okay? As you build this relationship with your shadow by surrendering into it or letting go into it, what naturally happens is you start to form a authentic sense of self-identity that then becomes a part of your ego, that then becomes this template that you once again can bring to the collective consciousness and can use in your personal life to resonate at a certain frequency or resonate with at a certain level. So what I'm saying is that at the deepest core of this death energy and letting go, what naturally occurs, and this happens through the natural cycles of how nature functions with death and rebirth, you literally will, will emerge just like your soul emerged from dark space, we could say, you will naturally emerge a light that becomes your new sense of self-identity. And this is what we call the authentic self. Now, this authentic self is never fixated. It is always changing throughout your evolutionary process. But generally speaking, the authentic self has its foundation in the pure essence of just being where the soul resides in that deep unconscious space. But then the identity, the, the unique light that then forms from that darkness through surrender then becomes this identity that you have access to that you don't need to maintain through unhealthy coping, that you don't need to maintain with certain belief systems and certain attachments, but literally exists as a neurological energetic pathway within your nervous system. And this is going to absolutely connect to what is called your heart center. So all the different meridian points that exist within your heart center, which is generally in this area of the chest, this is going to be a neurological pathway that you have access to, to then operate from an authentic self. So your authentic self operates from the energetic place of the heart. So this is where your intentions are very pure in regards to source evolution and seeing from that perspective. And as I said, this naturally emerges through the full acceptance of death and surrender when working with these, these deepest degrees of shadow. So as that authentic self is then born, this becomes your new identity. It becomes your new ego that is the authentic self. So this becomes your template that you get to work with and you get to operate with in everyday life and further 
wire it into your nervous system. And this will be a refinement process for the rest of your life. So there will be phases where you're going to be working with the authentic self identity and then deep layers of, let's say, trauma from the past come through and then you surrender back into death within the shadow and let go completely. So that identity you let go of. And then as you're in that acceptance of shadow and just being, that identity actually gets stronger and it gets more refined and it becomes, generally speaking, more powerful, more resonant at a higher frequency. Because what you're dissolving and deconstructing, once again, are all the aspects of the sense of self that are not truly who and what you actually are. And all that is able to then remain is what is authentic to who and what you actually are and the things that are in alignment with the purpose. So that is the authentic self that always will naturally uh, emerge from the darkness of the shadow when you fully find acceptance within it. So most people don't have acceptance within their shadow. And that's why most people operate from a false identity or a false self. So the essence of a false self is an identity attachment that has a lot of these different belief systems and protective control managerial mechanisms that try to keep you safe, but are doing it in a way that is then neglecting your inner child and neglecting your ability to be vulnerable and to generally feel good and feel safe because it's not operating from more of a heart-based center within the system, within the nervous system. Okay? That is a false self. So to dissolve the false self, you have to go into shadow. So it makes sense why there's so much indoctrination and so much programming against going into the darkness or going into the shadow because obviously when people operate more from the false self, it is easier to manipulate and easier to control consciousness. And that simply is what it is, especially for where we're at as a collective consciousness within this point in time. But as we're evolving as a collective, there's going to be more understandings of these principles and sciences that it is that I am now explaining to you as you are here listening to what it is that I'm saying. Okay. And what I'm speaking about here is a really advanced understandings of these processes. It's really advanced. So the whole concept of Jesus Christ dying on the cross and rising into heaven is the same concept of completely surrendering, finding acceptance within the death process of shadow, and then realizing the soul is permanent and infinite. And then that creates an authentic sense of self that then emerges from the depths or emerges from the unconscious into a conscious uh, state. And then when you access that conscious state, that authentic sense of self identity, you know, at the core of your being, that the roots of you don't even need an identity. The roots of you aren't attached to your sense of self, to your identity. You know, your roots just are. So whenever you need to let go of identity, when life gets too overwhelming or things get too chaotic and you can't process, you can always surrender completely and return back home to the pure essence of just being, which is always permanent and will always nurture you and regenerate you. And then it will strengthen a sense of self again that is going to be more in tune with the soul, which is the authentic self as we're talking about. So the phoenix that goes into the darkness and then rises from the ashes, it's the same concept. All of the different mythologies that talk about this stuff are referring to the same principles that it is that I am breaking down right now. Okay, so hopefully, as I describe this, this gives you a much deeper perspective on being able to find an acceptance with and then building a relationship with your personal shadow. This is very valuable and very important that you have a relationship with and realize you're not doing this work to change it. 
You're not doing this work to get rid of it. You're doing this work to find a deeper acceptance with it and then realizing your roots are in the unconscious. Your deepest primal roots exist within the no being, which is the pure essence of your soul's light. And then as you surrender to that through death, through letting go, that is where you emerge a new sense of self, a new identity that is much more authentic and higher resonance that operates from a different neurological pathway within your physical body that resonates at a higher level. And that changes everything in your life. Because once again, what's going on internally within your nervous system is then manifesting and reflecting through the external world around you. So if you have a bunch of these negative attachments and belief systems and a bunch of unhealthy coping mechanisms that are holding up this false self, and this false self is largely geared on attaching to, let's say, the emotion of anger and the, the idea of victimhood and you're holding up this false self and you're resisting feeling certain emotions like fear, like sadness, and you're continuously having to escape those things, you are literally holding an energetic resonance within yourself that is a, ne a deeply negative charge that is a repressed negative charge, not a free negative charge that flows through, but a repressed one, basically one you're holding on to, and then you're going to manifest external reality external circumstances, situations, and relationships that are going to reflect what you are holding on to internally and what it is that you're repressing internally. So the emotions you're trying to escape or get away from are the situations that you're manifesting designed to recreate those emotions for you to feel them and be willing to embrace them with acceptance and then letting go of certain attachments unhealthy coping mechanisms and belief systems that are not allowing you to once again let go and surrender and and feel okay and have that deeper acceptance of just being you at the core so that is exactly what it is that i really wanted to discuss in this video so if you got value from this hit the thumbs up button. That lets me know that you got value from this. Drop down into the comment section and let me know exactly what you learned from this. Let me know what aspects of this that you resonated with. I would love to hear your own personal, excuse me, personal experience as well. Working with your shadow and working with the unconscious as well as working with your identity and working with the authentic self. I would love to hear your own personal perspective and also give me some other recommendations on different types of topics and subjects that you would like to hear from me as well, because I'm really open to talking about these different things. Okay. Hit the notification bell, get notified whenever I post. That's also valuable. I post every other day and with content like this, you don't want to be missing out. Come down here and subscribe to my YouTube channel because by subscribing, you are further energetically connecting to everything it is that I'm doing and it is that I'm teaching. So take advantage of that. Also, if you know someone that would gain value from this understanding and from this perspective, I encourage you to copy and paste the link of this video and send it to that person. Also, if you have a social media platform that you want to post this on, or break down clips of this and share it with other people. I don't care. Please go ahead and do that. Let's spread this information. Let's spread this consciousness like a wildfire, okay, through the collective. All right, so with that being said, we'll leave that there. Now, I'm going to take your awareness to literally the most important link within the YouTube description, and this is the first link, okay? This is going to take you to my Patreon. Now, on my Patreon, I have over 260 plus exclusive videos only for the Patreon members. Very valuable content, all the way from occult education, deep education on some of these occult topics and sciences that most people have no idea about. Okay. 
I have a whole collection section of that. Initiation education when it comes to the Kabbalah. Ritualistic practices that I am literally performing on camera and then teaching you how to do yourself. Super valuable stuff, all broken down and organized in these different collection sections. Okay. Then there is trauma education, nervous system regulation education, all of these things that are uh, foundational to this development process. All of that stuff's on the Patreon. And at this point, there is over 1,000 active members on the Patreon, and it's just continuing to spiral upwards and grow. So that alone speaks for itself. So if you're interested, check that out. At tier three and number four, you are gaining exclusive access to something that is only something that I do for these tier members. This is a ritual service that is called the Universe B Vampire Ritual. Now, this is extremely exclusive, and it's the only ritual occult type of service that I offer for my collective consciousness. Now, out the gate, it's not for everyone. This is for people that are more into doing that deeper work with their shadow and with the deep unconscious and are willing to go through these processes of dissolution and processing repressed energies within the system. Now, also, if you're in resonance with some of the darker energies that exist within our universe as a whole, connecting to the demonic realm, this is also something that I would completely recommend for you if you're in resonance with that. So it's not for everyone, but if you are someone that's in resonance with doing this type of work, it is absolutely valuable for you to take advantage of. Okay. So this is a ritual service once again. And what it is, is it is an energetic transfer from me to you. So all the different life experience that I have, as well as my occult initiatory experience, it has become basically energetic data that now resonates in my energy field that I perform an advanced ritual to transfer my energy field to you as the participant so that that resonance can then support you through your development process, working with your deep shadow and working with your deep unconscious to help support surfacing these things in a healthy way so that you can integrate them once again in a healthy way. Okay, so this happens at a deep subconscious, unconscious, and conscious level to the degree where people receive the service from me. And then they say they start seeing me in their dreams, supporting them through their development, through their dreams. It starts operating through your psyche in more of a subconscious way or an intuitive way where you start getting intuitive inclinations that help support your ability to find acceptance working with these aspects of yourself. Okay. So this is a ritual that I perform on the 29th of every single month that has one. And the deadline to sign up is the 28th. So if you're wanting to take advantage of it, if you sign up any time before the 29th, then you're going to be included within this ritual service. And it's something that you can uh, take advantage of every single month and get a continuous energetic streamline, streamlining to yourself from every single month's ritual service. So there are over 350 active members that are continuously taking advantage of this ritual service because a lot of people are noticing the energetic values and benefits of having this ritual service performed. And once again, it, it initiates a deeper acceptance and a deeper understanding as well as ability to work with the shadow aspects of self to then let go of things that are unhealthy and let go of these different attachments, et cetera, to then emerge an authentic self through that inner void and through that acceptance of that inner void within. Okay. And this is not a process that happens overnight. And this ritual does not do it for you. It is offering itself as a foundation and in many ways at a, as a healthy catalyst to support you through this process in these understandings that it is that I'm describing here. And there's tons of people that have received this ritual service and are continue, continuing to that have tons of valuable feedback in regards to some of the energetic changes that are occurring. Okay, so 
Once again, if this is something that you're interested in, you can also go to my playlist section on my YouTube channel. I have an entire playlist called The Vampire Rituals, etc. that is going to give you a deep breakdown of more education on the subject. So check it out. It's the first link in my YouTube video description is where you can join. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to be right back. Okay, just had to let my cat back in. Okay, so we're back. Um, okay, so that's that first link in the YouTube video description. Second link is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me or you can book mentorships with me. This is going to be one of the most intimate, significant ways to personally work with me where you can gain huge amounts of value because I'm going to be able to get to know you on a personal level and help you work through some of these deeper traumas help you build a healthy, unique foundation for yourself that supports nervous system regulation. And once again, giving you that proper foundation and understanding of how to work with these repressed emotions and these, you know, repressed memories and wounded parts of yourself. So as we work together and we start to develop this healthy foundation, once that's in place, then we can actually start talking about some of the deeper occult aspects of things when it comes to occult initiations. So right now, I've literally got a full schedule based on how I work. I have a full schedule of clients that I work with uh, throughout the five days of the week, and then I take my weekends off. I can still create room for anyone at this point right now that wants to take advantage of this uh, mentorship with me. So if that is something that you're interested in, definitely consider it. It is the second link below where you can book these mentorships. Okay, that's where I'm gonna leave that for now. Okay, now also within the same second link below, you have an option to book a tarot card reading with Alexia. She is a very gifted tarot card reader. She's very intuitive and she can help you better understand the internal processes that you're going through so that you can better accept and work with them and then tell you what to expect moving into your near future to prepare you for different shifts that are going to be taking place. What she does is she also connects all of this stuff back to the Kabbalistic tree to give you an even deeper, different dimensional perspective. All right. So if you want to take advantage also in the second link below, book your tarot card reading with Alexia. Now at the third link, this is a Lucifer's Foundation course. This is a very unique course. If you're looking to build a healthy relationship with the energy that is known as Lucifer, this course gives you everything that you need to know step by step. So definitely look into it. Uh, tons of people have bought it. People are literally continuously buying it and getting tons of valuable um, experience from working with this course. So definitely look into it. It is the third link below. Now in the fourth link below, this is my YouTube membership. So if you would like to join within the YouTube Universal Mastery family and community, I would love to have you. Your name appears as green. You get a special badge next to your name. It's just super fun. So I would absolutely love to have you a part of the Universal Mastery family. Definitely consider it. That is going to be at that fourth link in the YouTube video description. So check that out. Now at the fifth link, this is going to be the final link below. This is where you can look at all my different book recommendations. So this is a four ebook bundle that you gain immediate access to that gives you the fundamentals on the occult, all the way from the different spirits, angelic, demonic, the sigils, the invocations, the descriptions, the tree of life, death, the archetypes, all of these different fundamental things that you need a general outline of understanding on when you're getting into the deeper initiations of the occult, this is my recommendations for you. So if you're looking for something to read and you're looking for something to study right now, this is what I recommend at that fifth link below. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to wrap it up. I appreciate all of you very, very, very much. And I hope you all have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.